Hi, I'm Dr. Lowell Payne with Tidewater Orthopedics. I wanted to do a short talk today to explain what is a rotator cuff. I hear that question a lot. A lot of rotator cuff injuries are out there. In fact, about a quarter of a million rotator cuff surgeries are done every year. So this is a pretty common problem. But most people have no idea what we're talking about when we say that there's a problem with their rotator cuff. So first, we need to know what it is. So this group of four tendons completely goes around the ball and socket to center the ball in the socket. That's the primary role of the rotator cuff. It helps hold the ball in the socket. We call it a dynamic stabilizer. So it stabilizes the shoulder joint. And without that stability, the major muscles that move the arm can't work very well. So most people are familiar with those bigger muscles that you work them out when you're in the gym, your, your pecs, your lats, your traps, your delts. All of those are the power muscles, but the rotator cuff is the fine tuning muscles. Most people think that if you have a torn rotator cuff, you can't lift the arm. That's not the case. That's not the role of the rotator cuff. It's more to stabilize the shoulder. So let me show you what those look like and I'll explain to you why it works in that way. Right. So here is a 3D anatomy model of a shoulder. It's on the Merck Manual website. They did a great job of uh, diagramming this out. And so I wanna use it to show what those tendons look like in the shoulder. So this is a right shoulder. The biceps muscle you can see here in the front, that's not part of the rotator cuff. So we're gonna get rid of that. And now let's zoom in on the rotator cuff. And so I'll tell you what those four muscles are that hold the joint together. So you have one big one in the front called the subscapularis. That's the red that you see coming across the front of the shoulder. As we rotate it around to the side, it shows these little blue, bluish looking areas that are the bursa. I'll explain later what's involved with the bursa and why those are important, but for now, let's get rid of the bursa so that we can, again, see better the rotator cuff. So there is one tendon coming across the top called the supraspinatus. There are two tendons in the back, the infraspinatus and the teres minor. So these four tendons the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor make up the rotator cuff. And as I told you, they go all the way around the ball and socket. That's looking at them from behind. You see the three, the two in the back and the one on top. We rotate it around to the front. You can see the one in the front. In between those tendons is where the biceps goes can barely make out the biceps. It's the white tendon here coming right there along the top, and it's going to go down this groove in the bone, so the biceps kind of splits right between the rotator cuff. So these are the four tendons that are helping hold the shoulder joint in place. So let's kind of get a little better look here at the ball and socket. So the socket of a shoulder joint is pretty shallow. This is looking at the socket with the ball removed. You can see the, the socket of a, a shoulder is more like the, a golf tee. So I you like to use that analogy of a golf ball sitting on a tee and the ball will easily fall off the tee because the tee is not very deep. So we need the rotator cuff as one uh, a part of the anatomy to help hold that ball in place. So here is an example of how that rotator cuff tendon is gonna go all the way around the ball and socket. The biceps is that area I just got rid of. That's gonna help hold that ball in place so that the power muscles can do their job to help lift the arm.